there was a goal to like go full time musician. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think full time musician doesn't always mean full time creator. Yeah. You know, it means like sideman or you know just playing random gigs. Like I want to be a full time creator. This is Ty McDonald, and welcome to the Jalapeno Podcast. This episode features banjo player Bennett Sullivan. In the conversation, we discuss how Bennett got his start playing banjo and about later in his career receiving some much welcomed and needed validation from idol Steve Martin. We also talk about Bennett's love of teaching and how that led him to develop his business, TuneFox. That's T-U-N-E-F-O-X, TuneFox.com. All the music you'll hear in this episode is created and performed by Bennett himself. Enjoy. I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina, originally. Actually, I was born in Raleigh, but um, at age five, I moved to Greensboro. I uh, actually didn't pick up the banjo until I was 12 or 13 years old. My dad got a banjo in the house and then um, kind of pushed me to take lessons because he played guitar and he wanted someone to jam with. Yeah. <laughs> and so my teacher was just this dude that uh, wasn't very inspiring to be around. So I actually quit banjo. Um, and then I wrote in a paper at school that I really wish I hadn't quit banjo. And um the prompt was something probably like, what's something that you really wish you hadn't stopped doing? Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was the only only because of that teacher that didn't inspire you. Yeah, but at the time I didn't realize that. Yeah. You know, I was just an eighth grader being like, you know, banjo was cool. Like, yeah. why did I stop that? Yeah. It wasn't like I really loved the sound of bluegrass. Mm-hmm. I do. I mean, I still like the sound of bluegrass and I grew to like it. But in eighth grade, I was listening to like hip hop, like yeah. Ja Rule and Fat Joe. Yeah. <laughs> I think at that point he got me like an, a real banjo, like a really nice one. Yeah. Or not really nice, but like a good enough one to like create a nice sound so yeah. I could like really enjoy what I'm doing. And um, I got lessons with a really good teacher. And then I had friends that started to play with me. Um, we had a band, a high school band called Beaconwood. And then from there, like after we graduated high school, um, I worked on cruise ships a little bit. So I worked for Carnival Cruise Lines as a as a uh, electric guitarist and I brought my banjo with me so I could practice. As an 18-year-old, that was that was sweet. Yeah. I mean, uh traveling a lot, getting paid uh fairly well. I mean, really well for an 18-year-old right out of high school. Um I get to play music all the time. I got to practice all the time. Um always had an audience. Always had an audience. Uh you know, not always the best audience, <laughs> being a uh, cruise ship audience. But um, it was it was a good gig for me because I was playing music on the gig all the time, learning stuff. I also had mentors that had been doing the cruise ship for a while, and they're amazing musicians. Um, I was definitely going in as like the weakest link. Sometimes we would play an hour a day. Sometimes we play four hours a day, but every single day we would play. So did the, was the cruise ship routine? Was that when you were in college, or is that in between high school and college, or? That was before college. Before college. Yeah. Well, actually, I went to UNCW for like half a semester yeah. and dropped out because I, I just wasn't clicking with the yeah. music department. I really liked my teacher there, but uh, I had left because there was just, it didn't feel right to be there. Yeah. So my dad actually suggested the cruise ship. Cool. Um, and then I, I jumped on a cruise ship. Then I went to UNC Asheville for a little bit. Once again, I didn't really dig it. So I dropped out, yeah. went on another cruise ship. Uh, you're um, always pursuing you always knew you're going to pursue music wherever you were yeah but I'd never like fully fully committed to being a performer yeah. or being a uh, um, a creator you mm-hmm. know I was always like kind of like I'm not really good enough for this so um, I decided that working on teaching would probably be a, a better way to go and yes. So I've gone through so many iterations of like lessons and stuff, and I've just taught like, you know, packages of lessons of four lessons at a time, uh, for so many different price points. And then uh, I started a membership site called BanjoByEar.me, and uh, or if, for a while it was Bennett Sullivan Music, just like a Bennett Sullivan membership, and 
that was actually inspired by another podcast. I think it was like a Roman uh, history podcast that cool. does like a five dollar a month membership where you get like bonus transcriptions and stuff. And oh, so wow. I was like, oh, well, that could be a cool thing for my YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's what inspired the membership site was like doing YouTube videos. I wanted to like uh, expand outside of my in-person reach and, right. and do more Skype lessons, do more stuff online for people. Um, so I started doing YouTube videos and and then I was like, all right, well, I want to monetize this somehow and YouTube ads are not very good for that. Yeah. Um, or I'm not going to make anything with like 3,000 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, so I want to try and do a membership site. And uh, so I, I did that and set it up online and um, it's been really cool to like, you know, support people through that but yeah. also do some private lessons and do master classes and stuff like programs online programs it's definitely it's definitely turned more uh tech focused rather than like in person yeah and now that i have a kid i don't really want people to come into my place right <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're the protector yeah, yeah. exactly i just want to like do skype lessons yeah. it's so much more easy well it's, it's so much easier so great that you have that that tool because in, in theory yeah. you could reach all, all sorts of people totally yeah. like it's basically you know infinite growth at this point yeah well i know the banjo market is only <laughs> so big but <laughs> it's uh it's um it has room to grow for sure yeah If you were going to teach me banjo as a total beginner, and what would be what would the first few months look like for me? Well, uh, the way I teach is I, I really want to reinforce the vocal connection to your instrument because if you can hear something in your head, uh, you can definitely play it on your instrument. But first, you have to kind of strengthen that. Um, and the way that I do that is I tell people to like sing at the lesson. So it's a little uncomfortable for people, but. Yeah. Um, we don't like sing lyrics, we sing melodies. So you know the the melody to Happy Birthday. So right. that means you can play it on your instrument, but you just need a starting place. So gotcha. we'll establish the key on our instrument just by strumming a chord. Banjo is tu tuned to an open chord, so it makes it a little bit easier than guitar. Um, and then we'll just figure out those notes for Happy Birthday with mm -hmm. that starting point. Um, and then the lessons are all based on that. So I'll teach you technique, like uh, different roles um, and different chords, and then we'll get into tunes, but it's all very much in like an ear-based learning mode yeah. instead of looking at a piece of paper. or um, You want to you wanna learn melodies. You know That's the ultimate goal is you want to be able to play a melody on your instrument. Yeah. And the scales aren't necessarily going to prepare you for that. Like They will give you some technical facility, mm -hmm. but um, there's a ton of melodies, a ton of like really fun melodies to play, yeah. fiddle tune melodies that are scale-based. Yeah. So you're still learning the scales, but you're also learning this melody right. that you can jam. Yeah. Uh, you used to jam with another person. And speaking of jamming, did you ever end up jamming with your dad? All the time. He's a guitarist? Yeah, he's a guitarist. He's a good, good, good guitarist. I, I try to jam with him every time I see him. That's so. really cool. That yeah, that's great. So, and my mom is learning how to play now, too. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Starting a family band. I'm going to go back a little bit. You were talking about how you, you never thought that you were good enough to say that this was going to be your, you're going to be a full time creator. Um, it's only until fairly recently where I've like been, oh, wow, I can, I can do this. You yeah. Know? Like it, it's always good to get these um, these gigs that kind of like validate you. Right. <laughs> it's really nice, like the Steve Martin gig, for example, yeah. like Bright Star. Right. Um, I went to Steve's house and played for him, Peter Asher, who's like an epic producer, um, and the music director, and they liked it, you know. And yeah. I was just like, oh wow, these guys like enjoy what I'm doing. Right. Steve was looking for a banjo player in Brooklyn or in New York at the time and Nolan Piccioni lived around the corner from me. He's the banjo player in the Punch Brothers. Yeah. And um, uh, Steve and him are tight so uh, he asked Noam if he knew anybody and Noam fortunately uh, 
gave him my name. Oh, wow. Yeah. Next to the cruise ship, it was the most job-like uh, gig that I've had as a musician. Structured day-to-day. Totally practice, structured, yeah. exactly. And, um, you know, y- you, you're you getting on the train every day at the same time. Mm-hmm. You're um, playing the same music every night. You're getting into costume, like you have a uniform. Yep. Um, you get paid a salary. Yep. You know, it's just like a, a very job-oriented uh, gig, which uh, as musicians, we're not used to that yeah um, generally speaking you know i would play one-off gigs and teach freelance stuff mm-hmm. um it definitely required a level of focus and um a, a lot you know there's nights that you want to be there there's nights that you don't want to be there and you have to like show up either way right um it was such a great show it's such an awesome I really show love that. i know i i really i miss it you know i'm, I'm glad that i'm done with it because yeah. i like being more creative than yeah. just being locked down to one uh, one gig that you're doing the same music for every single night, but yeah. um, it's a beautiful show. Yeah, yeah super. Cool. It's so inspiring too to see someone like Steve Martin who had, had a, obviously an iconic career in in comedy, and then yeah. to put on an unbelievable, it's amazing production in a whole separate realm. It's incredible. I mean, um, yeah, he's just he's such an insp- inspiration to be around, and he's so generous too. Like. Yeah. So cool. He sent Milo, you know, some clothes mm. <laughs> for being born. He's just yeah. like really, really wants to, you know, know that uh, I'm doing well. I get the feeling that he does. What about bluegrass drew you in, or what? What did you ultimately? Why did you ultimately decide for that to be the thing? I think I was drawn in by bluegrass because of well, for one, because of the improvisation. Uh, I love the speed, you know, I wouldn't call myself a very fast player. Um, and I think, I, I think just the, the tonalities, like I really like listening to banjo, I really like listening to fiddle, and those two together sound really great together. certain vocalists that just hit me in the right place you know like Tony Rice his guitar playing and his vocal style is just like it feels so right to me Um, since my dad introduced me to it I've always just kind of like taken to it yeah who are some other uh, musicians that that come to mind as inspirations well Bela Fleck is a huge inspiration to me Steve Martin's an inspiration um Chris Eldridge, Julian Lodge, Chris Thiele, all the Punch Brothers, um, Tony Rice, Earl Scruggs, obviously. Um, it's on your T-shirt. Yeah. What does it say? If you don't let things develop, it's like keeping something in a bag and not letting it out to fly. Yeah. Nice. Caitlin designed this. Did she? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh, is that for Toon Fox? Yeah, it's for Toon Fox. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect segue. <laughs> right. <laughs> Tell us about Toon Fox. <laughs> uh, Toon Fox is a mobile and web application that helps people learn how to play music, um, specifically banjo, mandolin, and guitar. And we launched it last month. We had our beta out for about a year, but we um, have been working on the web version for quite a bit of time yeah. now. I started Toon Fox with uh, my co-founder Yuri Markalaus. He's a uh, Czech iOS developer. And so we worked together for a couple years before ToonFox kind of came to life. Mm -hmm. And um, we had put out several apps on the App Store. Uh, Pocket Lick is one of them. Uh, Listen and Learn is another one. And when we got the idea for ToonFox, it was very important that we did it for web. So we got a developer named Kuba Prokopek, or Jacob Prokopek. His nickname's Kuba. And uh, he's also a Czech um, developer. We wanted to put out this application and web program that would focus on creativity and learning and improvisation, um, ear training. Uh, eventually, it's going to include like a social aspect where you can you know, upload your own licks and upload your own songs. Um, 
but we just we we want to help people without using the normal kind of systems. There's a lot now. So like a lot of people learn from Tab. A lot of people will take recordings and learn them. I think that's a really good thing to do ultimately is like learn by ear and listen to a recording, figure it out while you apply it to your instrument. Um, TuneFox is for like the beginner to intermediate player that doesn't know how to do that yet, mm-hmm. um, but still wants to become but still has aspirations to become like a, a improviser and a creator. They want to write music. So it's kind of this middle ground between learning from tab, but also learning by ear. And we'll ultimately get people, you know, away from looking at tab entirely, even though it's a tab based software. Like I feel like uh, tab can be addicting and detrimental to people's progress. Um, I, I want to do something that that feels right to me, and, yeah. uh, and TuneFox feels right to me. Do you have a a ritual or a routine that allows you to get into a, a mentality for creating, or is it just kind of always on your mind, like when you're writing a song? Or I want to get better at like the ritual thing. I want to get better at the schedule thing because I think it's very helpful, especially as I'm like kind of wanting to do more in my life, like hang out with Milo and hang out with Emily and. Work on Tune Fox and work on work on banjo by ear, and then also write music. I feel like all of this stuff kind of is asking for a schedule. Mm. I, I guess I could ask more um, about when you were when you were kind of uncertain about your skill, or when you're comparing yourself mm-hmm. to your peers or to your your musical inspirations. What did give you the confidence to keep going? Other than you mentioned validation of getting asked to do gigs. But what else kept you going? Was it just your love of the music? Yeah, I think it was the love of the music and just the feeling of like, this doesn't feel wrong. Yeah. <laughs> not, not necessarily that this feels right. There was never a thought that this is like, oh, this is, this is right. This is what I should be doing. It was just like, um, I knew I didn't want to work, like for instance, on a pizza truck, which is what I did for a little bit before I went full-time musician. Yeah, I didn't want to work in retail, which is another thing I did. Yeah, um, I knew those things didn't feel right, and I guess there was a goal to like go full-time musician. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think full-time musician doesn't always mean full-time creator. Yeah. You know, it means yeah. like sideman or right. you know just playing random gigs. Yeah. Like I want to be a full-time creator. Right. Um, well, thanks for being on the show. Yeah, man. I'm glad we're able to do this finally. Yeah, I'm too. Thanks for having me. That was Banjo Man, Bennett Sullivan. Check out more of his work at B E N N E T T S U L L I V A N music.com. Thanks, everyone. That's it for now. And uh, see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>